Emperor Qianlong, a pivotal figure in the annals of Chinese history. On the other hand, the fact that he had a male concubine is a mystery that has intrigued historians for ages. Most people are unaware of this fact. So fasten your seatbelts, because you're about to learn everything about the wildlife of Emperor Qianlong's male concubine. During the reign of Emperor Qianlong, the Qing dynasty was at the height of its strength, and Emperor Qianlong's court was renowned for its luxury and magnificence. Let's delve into the history of this remarkable individual, shall we? Who exactly was Emperor Qianlong, and who exactly was this legendary emperor who had a male lover in addition to his many female concubines? Well, late in his lengthy life, the hugely popular Emperor Qian, lengthy of the Qing dynasty of China, took one of his dishonest advisors to bed. This event occurred towards the end of his long life. Qian Long, the fourth emperor of the Qing dynasty or the Manchu dynasty, was born in 1711 and began his reign in 1735. He would go on to rule for more than 60 years. Qian Long was named as his father's heir very early into his father's reign. This was a little bit of a contentious appointment, as he was the fourth-born son. However, by the time it came for him to rule, he was the oldest surviving male, although he had a male favorite. It's clear that Emperor Qianlong was not gay by all accounts. He was very much loved by his first wife, and the two had a son together. In addition to this son, he had at least 27 children, among his many concubines. It was under Qianlong's rule that China reached its largest size, and it was during this time that there was massive population growth. However, these great achievements are often overshadowed by the fact that he gave so much power to corrupted advisors later in his life. One of these officials worked his way up through the palace from an imperial bodyguard and eventually held titles such as the Vice President of the Ministry of Revenue Grant Counselor and Minister of the Imperial Imperial Household Department. This man was called Hessian. Who was Hessian? Hessian was just 25 years old when he began working as Qianlong's bodyguard at the Imperial Palace. Hessian was born in July 1750, and he began his career as a bodyguard at the Imperial Palace. After only one year on the job, he had already established himself as a formidable figure in the eyes of the Emperor. Others believe that Qianlong regarded the man to be rather attractive, which is why he gave him the impressive positions. Despite the fact that many people believe that Qianlong thought that Hashan resembled one of Qianlong's favorite concubines who had passed away. This concubine had passed away. Hashem rose up the ranks of the empire's bureaucracy at a breakneck pace, eventually reaching one of the highest ranking and most influential positions in the organization. In addition to the rapid and outstanding promotions, he was put in charge of handling both the household affairs and the budget for the entire empire. Both of these responsibilities were impressive. It's likely that the emperor chose the man for an advising post simply because he was impressed with the man's work and wanted someone with that type of work ethic in the role. Qian Long, who had special favor with the emperor, devised a scheme in which his youngest and most favored daughter would wed Hessian's son. This would bring the two families closer together in a way that the majority of the other advisors did not yet comprehend. Hashem was able to get away with things that most other officials could not and that they did not agree with because he was in control of the homes and the empire's finances and he could transfer money around as he saw fit. He was allowed quite a bit of discretion with this position and so he was able to get away with things that most other officials could not. This frequently required him to remove funds from public projects and transfer them into his personal pockets, which he did with both legal and illegal gains. At one point in time, it is believed that he had a net worth equal to approximately $270 billion in today's money. He didn't like the embarrassment of seeing someone his father publicly cared about and trusted steal from them. So he had Hessian put to death in addition to the theft itself. Naturally, Qian Long's son and successor didn't like that this advisor was stealing from the crown and from the nation, and he had Hessian put to death. Historians debate if Qian Long actually took Hessian as his lover or not. However, there's no reason to believe that he didn't. There's a lot of proof that the two were very much closer than Qian Long was to any of his other advisors, and that Hessian stayed in Qian Long's chambers on occasion. Another debated topic is, if they're lovers, how the relationship got started. There were a few different versions that historians have suggested the most romantic version is this. Before Qian Long was the emperor, he was a boy in his father's palace. One day he was walking through the gardens when he spotted one of his father's concubines. She was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen. 
and he had to have her for himself. Once his father learned about this, he ordered that the concubine be put to death for sleeping with someone other than himself, something concubines were never supposed to do. When Keon found out that she was set to die because of him, he felt sorry for her. Before she was killed, he touched her neck with a cinnabar and told her that they would meet again in 20 years. When Kian Long saw Hessian, he was immediately drawn to the young man because of his close resemblance to the woman after he looked more closely at the man. Hessian had a red birthmark on his neck in the same spot as Kian Long had marked the concubine, and Hessian's age was consistent with that of a concubine. It is highly likely that this story is not factual, despite the fact that it has a very romantic ring to it. In reality, Qian Long was probably just attracted to a really bright young man. Heshen was an efficient worker who was also fluent in four languages, despite the fact that he was dishonest. Even if Heshen hadn't been the emperor's lover, the man would have lived a pleasant existence in the palace regardless of that fact. On the other hand, due to the fact that Heshen was in a relationship with Qian Long, he was able to enter the secret chambers of the emperor and enjoy an even higher level of luxury than either you or I could ever fathom. Respect was accorded to him almost universally universally within the palace due to his position, regardless of the means by which he had gained it. Heshen was also the recipient of many lavish and extravagant gifts from Kim Long. Some historians have even argued that all of Heshen's wealth came from those gifts from the emperor and that there were no corrupt actions at all. This probably isn't true though, just based on how much money Heshen was said to have it is possible, though that a significant amount of the wealth came from Qian Long, and that there were far fewer corrupt acts than history. Says there were Heshen's end and the terrible situation for Heshen. Whether it was because he was corrupt and the other officials were tired of him, or that they were just jealous of his close relationship with Qian Long, the result was the same after Kian Long died. Heshen was put on trial for his actions. Of course he was found guilty, and he was given a death sentence where he was ordered to kill himself. The accounts vary on how he was supposed to kill himself, but all agreed that he committed suicide by tying his own hands and feet together. Do you believe that having that degree of money in life is going to make up for the fact that people will remember you as a bad person when you're gone? If you enjoy watching videos like this one, make sure to subscribe and then click the link to be notified of other bizarre historical events. In the Chinese media, Heshen has established himself as an easily recognized character. He is consistently portrayed in a sarcastic light, as befits his status as the antagonist of the story. The enthralling and heartbreaking tale of Emperor Qianlong's male concubine has now come to an end. So there you have it, folks. Come back with us the following time as we unearth even more buried treasures from the pages of history. To tide you over until then, just remember to keep adventuring and to never give up looking for the amazing tales that have shaped our planet. Thanks for watching, bye.